my people said to your God speak ye comfortable to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished somebody should shout right there yes, Lord. yeah I think y'all missing it this morning he said comfort ye comfort ye he's telling Isaiah to comfort the people comfort my people says your God speak comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her tell her that her warfare is accomplished that her iniquity is pardoned for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins come on somebody come on the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, uh, we heard this before. Is, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made whole, made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord, hallelujah, and the glory of the hallelujah. Lord, hallelujah, because he is Lord, the glory of the Lord, because he is Lord, the glory of the Lord, because he is Shaddai, okay. the glory yes. of the Lord, because yes. he's Jehovah Jireh, yes. the glory of the Lord, because he's Elroy, the glory, the Shabbat of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Father bless this word. Let it be an encouragement. Let it edify and you'll be exalted in it in Jesus name. I want you to take a deep breath. You may be seated. I want you to take a deep breath right there and I want you to find a neighbor Find a neighbor, and I want you to tell that neighbor, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Come on, be obedience is better than sacrifice. Find a neighbor, and tell that neighbor, 
the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many times we are going through things in our lives and it feels like we're in a turbulent place. Yes. Hallelujah. On, Glory Pastor. to God. It feels like nothing seems to be going right. right. Yes. Every time I try to do good, evil presents itself. Yes. But I have good news for you today. God is shifting you into a place of blessing. Hallelujah. Well, Come on, somebody. I sense something in my spirit. I sense, I can smell something in the atmosphere. I can smell a shift getting ready to take place. Something atmospherically is happening in our lives. If you can't feel it, listen, you got to try the spirit by the spirit to see what spirit you are working with. Listen here, just as how this invisible demon, what we call coronavirus, has erupted and distracted and detoured and delayed and has been released in the atmosphere, God says to tell you, He's the invisible God. And the invisible God ain't scared of an invisible demon. Well, and so he is shifting your atmosphere. If I should put a topic to this message today, my topic is going to be shift your focus. Shift your focus. I feel an acceleration taking place in my life in your life come on is there is there one in the room today that god is accelerating some things uh, on your behalf Meaning he's moving quickly he's doing it fast he's doing it suddenly amen and so the topic today is shift your focus somebody say shift your focus shift your focus to focus means a state or condition permitting clear perception or understanding we woke up this morning what was the first thing that you focused on? Ah, Jesus. I woke up a little late this morning, so I didn't get to focus and do my devotion like I normally would. But I still got a chance to run into the restroom and say, God, I thank you for waking me up, for clothing me in my right mind. I got up this morning and I put on a part of my armor. I put on the belt of truth. And I said, God, I'm walking in your truth today. Because guess what? Today is a new day and God wants to shift our focus. So you can't, you can't worry about what happened yesterday. You got to walk in the newness of God and know that all things will work together for good. Because see, what happened yesterday is history to God. He ain't even concerned about it no more. Because you already said, Lord, forgive me of all my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. So as you get up in the morning, your focus is supposed to shift. I used to always tell the people, you got to refocus your focus. Because you got to get to a place where you're realizing, what is my focus on? Because whatever you focus on is going to manifest and become real in your life. Amen. Amen. God is getting ready to do something big. And he's getting ready to do it fast. My God. I want you to look at the person next to you. I'm going to talk to Mama Dunstan today. And I want you to tell that person, this is the last time that you will see me like this. Come on, somebody. You got to tell that person right now. This is the last time. Come on. I wish I had a church uh, that really understood uh, that expect uh, what they were saying is going to come to pass. Uh, Mama, this is the last time you're going to see me like this. Come on. Come on. You got to say it like you really believe it. Uh, you got to throughout the Bible. Every time somebody would say something, they would bring manifestation. Uh, you got to speak it in the atmosphere. Let the atmosphere catch it. Uh, let the angel that got a dispatch uh, begin to move with it. Uh, and listen, whatever you say is going to become reality. Don't allow somebody else's perception to become reality in your life. Uh, they might say you're stupid, but you stay stuck on stupid. Because as long as you're stupid for Jesus, all things uh, are going to work together for good. So uh, when you get up in the morning, the first focus should be, Today is going to be the day that God has, I'm sorry, this is the day that God has made, and today is going to be a brand new day in my life. You've got to believe what you are saying. You can't just speak it and don't believe it. Hallelujah. You'll be an empty shell. But God is saying today, I want you right now, as you're sitting in your seat, begin to shift your focus Take your mind off the media. Take your mind off your family. Take your mind off your finances. Take your mind off everything. 
Can you take a minute, 30 seconds, and focus on me? My God. Thank you, Jesus. Do I have your attention, says the Lord God? Can I get your attention this morning? Can I get you to focus on me? As we go throughout the Bible, we get to see men and women of God go through different seasons in their lives. Yes. And sometimes we teach it, we preach it, we prophesy through it, and we forget what God is saying to us. We forget the moral of their trials, right. the morals of their tragedy, the morals of what they had to endure. Why did God allow him to go through these things? We look at Job's life, and people might say, why did God allow Job to go through? But God don't allow things without a purpose. God is intentional. He is also unpredictable. So you might have a plan. My mom used to say, man plan and God wipe out. You might have a plan, meaning God, man plans stuff, but God can erase it. Right. So your plans don't mean that it's going to fall through, baby. What it means is that you are writing the vision. You're making it plain. But if that vision or that word that you're writing down, that plan, don't line up right. with his will yeah. for your life, you can't believe that it's going to be erased. Oh, Lord. Come on, somebody. When we visit, we visit as, 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 as for some of us, this, we're going to a season of lack. For some of us, we're yeah. going to a season of just plain frustration. Yeah. Right. For some of us, we're going to a season of loss, a season of sickness, a season of transition. But for some, we're going to a season of acceleration. <laughs> and if we visit our brother Moses, that's our brother in the book of Exodus, Moses spent 40 years living as a shepherd in the desert. Wasn't nothing that he did wrong, uh -huh. but he had to suffer the consequences uh -huh. for somebody else's action. So he spent 40 years uh -huh. in the desert as a shepherd. <laughs> once upon a time, Moses thought that he could make a difference. He once dreamed of delivering Israel out of slavery. Now he was 80 years old, and he had to cease to believe that it was possible. He had to cease to believe that it was possible because he know that all things are possible yes. once he believed who yes. God come on somebody yes. it wasn't until Moses encountered God's presence in the burning bush I'm going somewhere with this I don't have to touch even touch my scripture yet but that that was when God revealed that it was his now time all right all right after 40 after 39 years on the 40th year Moses encountered God up on the mountain with, oh, with the burning bush. Listen, I'm helping somebody this morning. And so after his encounter with God, something accelerated. <laughs> after his encounter, something shifted. Listen, you want to understand why you can't see the shift happening in your life? Because you're not having an encounter with God. Your encounter is emotional. Your encounter is a pity party. You got to get in the presence of God. You got to stop whining, stop bickering, stop complaining, woe is me, and get yourself together. You got to get in the presence of an almighty God, and you got to get on your knees. Hallelujah. And you got to say, he is Lord. God, I trust you. God, I believe you. Therefore, depression, oh God, delay will have no way in your life because now you are having an encounter. Just like the woman at the well, she had an encounter. She had an encounter. She had a, a, she had a real encounter with God. The woman that touched the hem of his garment, she had an encounter with God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And everybody's encounter might come different. You might not be at a well. Hallelujah. But you might get a well experience. You might not be. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh God, bleeding for 12 years. But you will get a well experience. You might not see the burning bush. But you will get an encounter. An encounter that will now become a divine acceleration. You will move from a season of wandering to a season of divine acceleration. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Moses was propelled into confrontation with Pharaoh, mm. the one that grew him. 
the one that taught him all he knew. Yes. <laughs> yes, Lord. And his acceleration, his shift that God began on that mountain caused him to have to go back to the place where he, well, he wasn't born there, but that's the place where he was groomed. So he had an Egyptian mentality, but so God had to keep Moses in the wilderness to take that Egyptian mentality out of him. Remember earlier I said to you, Y'all missed it. I said to you, he was in the wilderness because of somebody else's experience. But he really was in the wilderness for his own experience. Because God knew he had a plan for Moses' life. So God had to shift him from the Egyptian mentality. I want you to look at yourself and speak to yourself and say, Self, I don't care where I came from. I'm shifting my mentality. I'm shifting my focus. I'm not going to about what he says and she says. I am where I'm supposed to be and I'm going to bloom and I'm going to grow. So this shift is going to accelerate me to a new place in Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm here to tell you today. Our brother Joel said it better in Joel 2 and verse 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palm worm, my great arm which I send among you. Joel was a prophet of God. And Joel got the word from God. And God told Joel that everything, tell the people, hallelujah, Shabbat, that I am going to restore. The 40 years that you wandered around the wilderness, the time that you wasted in that nasty relationship, the thing that you have done that did not please me. He said, yes, I see your sins, but I'm going to bless you because my purpose has to be fulfilled. Every word that I spoke over you because before I formed you I knew you and I destined you for greatness so you are not going to put me to shame daughter you won't put me to shame son I am going to promise you that everything that I say is yes sir, and amen and it shall be fulfilled God is getting ready to accelerate a shift in our life but we have to shift our focus we have to shift our mindset the Bible says, let this mind be in me that is also in Christ Jesus. So therefore, things are going to happen sometimes suddenly, but without a shadow of a doubt. If you trust him and believe him, just as Moses trusted him, just as Joel Trusted God, just as Joshua hey! trusted God, yes, Jesus. just as Abraham trusted God, mm. it didn't look like it was gonna work, it didn't look possible. Mm -hmm. But you have to stop every other voice that's coming in your mind and every other voice that's coming in your ears, and you gotta shut out the things that's not like God. And you got to take God for his word. Yes. Listen, the Bible says yes. man shall not live by bread alone. You got to trust God's word because he is the word all by himself. And when you know the word, you definitely will understand his principles all and right. his precepts. You will understand his tragedies. You will understand his procedures. You will understand his policies. You will get to a place where you say, God, I trust you even in the midst of what I see. It does not look good around me. I don't even know what tomorrow holds. God, I don't understand how this is going to get done. But God, I trust you with my entire life. And I'm going to shut my mouth and just let you go before me and let everything that the enemy said be scattered. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Many of us are focused on the temporal. Yes. We're looking at what we see. We're looking at money. We're looking at the world. We're looking at sex. Can I be real with you? I know we have children in here, but it's the truth. But that's instant gratification. That's momentary, momentarily happiness. That's a feel-good moment. It's only a feel-good moment. All the Gucci and the Prada and the Fendi, I've been there, done that. I ain't got it now because guess what? I don't need that. Well, All the Chanel, 
and, and um, what, Christian Labotini or whatever they call them or whatever. All these names don't mean nothing to God. Yes. Because like Deaconess Alice gave her testimony this morning, she was blessed by someone with all these designers yes. and the person's not even here now. So none of this means nothing right. if God is not in the Come middle on. of it. Come you on. can have it all, right. but you better have Jesus. Right. Right. He better be the center of your life. He better be yes. the reason why you're living. All right, Lord. If you're living. All right, Lord. Instant, you're living. instant gratification yeah. is what we are focusing all right. on. We are focusing on what things that look good, feel good, sound good, smell good, taste good. We are focusing our focus is off. Right. So God says, I'm, I give warning before destruction. Yes, yes. my God. Mm. Yes. Hey, hey. Satan tried to give Jesus the instant gratification. Mm. Matthew 4, yeah. we see where in verse 3, I don't know if you caught it, but I did. If you are the son of God, yes. are you kidding me? <laughs> are you serious? Here, If you are the son of God, command these stones to become great. Instant gratification. Forget your reliance on God. Think about your stomach. You got to eat this food. You ain't got to fast. You ain't got to pray. All you got to do is to serve that music up and that Beyonce and give a shout out to Beyonce and get all the single ladies come in and all these things we do. Instant gratification. Jesus. See what happened is it's not the food that's the temptation. Come on. It's the shift ah. in your focus. <laughs> See, he wasn't trying. He knew that Jesus was not going to eat. Because yeah. he's God all by himself. Yeah, yeah. But what he was doing was trying to get Jesus to lose his focus. Uh -huh. Come on, focus pastor. is very Preach. important. Preach, yeah. Preach. I thank God for my doctoral classes. Preach. But I'm telling you, it teaches you a lot. Focus is very important. Focus goes with balance. Focus brings you to a place uh, where you have no other choice. Either you're going to trust trust him or God. Yes. So what is your focus uh, like today? Can you really say that all this week you've been focusing on God? Can we really say that we didn't lose our focus this week? But in the midst of losing it, we remember who he is right. and who we are. We remember that he is God all by himself. So when the enemy come at you like a flood, yes. it's not the food or the fasting or the things that he's trying to stop you from doing. It's not trying to stop you from reading the word. But what he's trying to do, yes, he wants that. But what he's trying to do is cause you to lose focus. So he brings animosity. He brings division. He brings confusion. He brings all manner of evil. Because he's the accuser of the brethren. He's the tempter. He's the prince of this earth. And so he brings all these things to come against you. And that's why we got to be Ephesians 6. And we got to wear the armor of God in our life daily. We got to put on the breastplate of righteousness. We got to study. We got to pray. We got to have a prayer life. We got to remember that the moment that you set foot outside, not even outside, the moment that you wake up in the morning, it's another fight. And what soldiers do, they put on their, 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 their armor so they can fight against the things that's coming against them. Their shield blocks every arrow, every dart. Hallelujah, God. Their head is covered. We were studying that this week. The woman was a powerful study. We're studying the arm of God. And it lets you realize that we were not armored. We were not suited. We were we are not ready yet. So we gotta get ourselves together. This fight is real. And if we lose our focus, mama, we have lost our path. And if we're walking line upon line and precept upon precept, we won't have no reason to go backwards. We will keep going forward. But the moment that we lose focus, yes. somebody call you 
I can't believe you said this about me. Somebody call you and then you forget and you start backtracking. You forget who you are. You forget that for God you live and for God you die. You forget that God is the center of your being. You forget, hallelujah, glory to God, that if you, the moment that you forget that God is God, you're going to backtrack. You're going to lose your focus. You're either going to drown or you're going to swim to the end to make it. And I'm here to tell somebody today that you will make it if you stay focused. You will make it if you stay rooted. You will make it if you stay grounded. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He's the great Ayama. He's the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. And he he said, if you walk with me and talk with me a long life far away, I will turn the wheel for you. I will do a new thing in your life. Yes, Lord. But we got to trust him. We got to trust him. We got to believe him. And even as the enemy, the devil was trying to tempt Jesus to tell him, come on, Jesus, you got to eat this food. What was Jesus' response in verse 4? He said, man shall not live by bread alone. I'm going to stop right there for a minute. Because a lot of us, when the devil comes, we don't know how to respond. <laughs> we don't have the word in us. So all we start doing is, oh God, how is this going? No, open up your sanctified mouth and speak the word of God. Devil, you a liar. Isaiah 54, 17 tells me, no weapon that's drawn against me will be able to prosper. If Jesus is the word and he used the word, how much better we should be using the word against the enemy. The word is power. It's not our opinion that matters. What matters is the word of God. Yes. Man shall not live by bread alone, but what? Every word that, that proceeded out of the, out of the mouth of God. And we have 66 books in the Bible to use. How about if you tell yourself, I'm going to start from Proverbs because it's the book of wisdom. And I'm going to read one chapter every single day. Ah, glory to God. You got unsaved people who are not serving God talking about the book of Proverbs. So how better yet, we who are sanctified and serving God, we who believe that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, but yet we don't even read the word of God. Come on, somebody. If you don't read the word, how can you distribute the word? How can you tell somebody about the word? Because the word don't even know you, not because you don't know it. Well, Hallelujah. Glory to God. So Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. It's not an, an instant gratification alone. We don't only live naturally, we live supernaturally. Yes. We live by every word of God. Every single word of God. And I'm going to my scripture. I know you're wondering, like, when is she going to talk about Isaiah 40? But just bear with me for a minute. Because, see, what we got to understand is that Jesus never shifted his focus. It was already... He was already in the right place in his spirit. He knew that he had a mission to accomplish. And so when you know that you have a mission, and listen, that brought me back to my husband. You know, we know he, Apostle Larry, I'm telling you, he knows that he has a mission to accomplish. So no matter what detour comes, no matter what delay comes, he's still going hard for Jesus. Why? Because he knows that the mission has to be accomplished. Come on, somebody just give God praise right there. Hallelujah. Can I tell you this morning that despite of what is going on around you, despite of the temptation, despite of what you see, we must choose spiritual transformation to keep us focused. What am I talking about? We have to change our outlook from the inside out. All right, <laughs> make it plain. You cannot come from the outside in because it's the matters of our heart. Yes. And so your heart has to be with him. And when your heart is lined up to God, nothing can be torn right, nah. or delayed. Right. It might be a little setback for a moment, but I best dare you believe that God allowed that setback for a reason. If he allowed the setback, 
It's a setup <laughs> for an outcome. It's a setup for a breakthrough. It's a setup. Listen, I'm not saying confusion not going to come, but we know that comes from the devil. But listen, God will allow things to happen to get you to where he's destined. Hey! Hey, come on. Glory to God. I wish I had someone in here today yes. that understood that God will set you up to show you out. God will set you up to bless you. Listen, nothing comes easy and nothing comes by surprise to God. Yes. He makes no mistake. No, he doesn't. God makes no mistake. Thank you, Lord. I wish I could go a little My bit God. deeper. <laughs> Woo! God. Mm. He makes no mistake. Yes, Lord. So sometimes you might be at a place where why do I feel like this? Well, why do I feel like there's nobody around to even talk to? But that's the Holy Spirit, baby. Speak. All he's doing mm -hmm. is telling you to get on your knees. Well, surrender. <laughs> All he's doing is saying, surrender. if surrender. my people yes. that are called by my name shall humble themselves. Listen, when you're humble, you got to get to a low place. You got to get down. You got to get to a place where you bow in his presence, where nothing else matters. It don't matter who's around you, where you're saying, God, I trust you in this lonely season of my life. In this lack of God, I trust you, God. I trust you, God. I believe that you are God. I believe your report. And God, I'm crying out. I'm crying out. I'm crying out. You got to get like Hannah. She was barren and she needed a child. And God took her praise and her prayer and he read it. And it was like meat to his spirit. And he responded. Yes, Lord. You want to get God to respond? You got to set your posture yes. in the right position. I hear the Lord saying, you are about to witness his heart and his hand. This Shamandosa. Woo! Jesus. Somebody in this room is about to witness his heart. This and somebody's about to witness her. He said, yes, sir. I've heard your cry. <laughs> I've heard your cry. You are about to see what they can't see. You are about to hear what they can't hear. Come on, somebody. You will not miss another blessing that is designed for you. But because now you are focused. <laughs> You've got tunnel vision and a popular teaching. Listen, you are focused on me. So now, daughter, now, son, the accelerated shift begins, Sister Danisha. It begins right now. My God. And what that shift is going to do, God. it's going to interrupt the plan of the enemy. All right. Well. <laughs> See, just as how God has a promise and a plan for our life, you think the devil don't have a plan trying to tear us down? All right. He has a plan. He My wants God. to tear, he wants to rip us apart. Yes. He wants to tear us down and make us lose focus yes. off the prize. Hallelujah. But you best believe, like I told you the other day, you are expected to win. Well, so you better run this race and you better fight. But you cannot fight with your flesh. All right. Yes, Lord. No flesh can glory in his presence. And the shift and the focus that God is doing right now in our lives is causing a crying. It's causing a hunger. It's causing more. You're saying, God, I need more. Must have more. Gotta have more. There's gotta be more for me, God. There's gotta be more to you, God. I need more of you, God. I need more of your power. I need more of your presence. Isaiah was a true prophet. And he said what only God said. He spoke what only God spoke. And the first 39 books of Isaiah say to the people to get themselves in order. We read Isaiah chapter 40. 
But if you read from Isaiah chapter 1 to verse 39, God was sending warning yes. before correction. Yes. God told Isaiah to tell the people to get themselves in order. Mm. Mm. My God, thank mm. you, Jesus. Thank you. Mm. Speak, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about you today. But sometimes you got to come to a place where you say, God, I'm going to let go. I'm going to let go, God. And I'm going to let you be God in my life. I don't understand what's going on right now. I might wake up in the morning. I might have tears in my eyes. Well. But God, I don't want your wrath to come on me. And God says, I'm giving you warning before my judgment. I'm telling you, you got to shift your focus. In chapter 40 of Isaiah that we read, there was a shift. And because of this shift, some theologians say that some, someone else wrote the remaining chapters of Isaiah. But that is just like God. Because when you read Isaiah chapter 40, you see a transition take place. You see something different happen after the encounter. And God is sending a shift in our life. We will never be the same again. I believe that some, not everybody is going to catch it, but I believe that somebody is going to leave this place today understanding, understanding that they got to be posture ready. Yeah. Understanding that they got to change their mindset. Understanding that they, they got to get ready for the plan that God has for them. Yes, Lord. In the scripture that we read earlier, Isaiah told the people in verse 4 every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill the lord told me to speak this over again and i want to be obedient to the spirit of god he says let me go back to verse 3 the voice of him that quiet in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the lord Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. But this is the key thing that God wants you to take from this whole scripture today. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Right. Is there one out there that's ready for the glory of God to be revealed in your life? I don't know about you, but I'm ready for God to reveal his glory in my life. He says, all flesh shall see it together. That means that we're going to all see it. Whether you see it or unsaid, you're going to see the glory of God be revealed in your life. He said, cry out with a loud voice. I want everybody to stand right now to your feet. Everybody's standing. I want you just to close your eyes. Close your eyes and just... Think of Jesus right now. Just lift your hands uh, towards heaven. Just begin to talk to him. Talk to him. Tell him all about uh, your troubles. Come on. This is a personal moment. It's not a holler or a hoop time. It's a time where we get uh, in, the, in the presence of God. It's a time where we kill every flesh. Uh, where we say there shall be no flesh uh, in his presence. Uh, come on. Just talk to him. Talk to him. Because he alone is worthy to be praised. Yes, and worthy to be adored. Come on, just lift one hand and lay one hand on your heart and say, God, I ask you to come into my heart today. Be my Lord and personal Savior. Reveal yourself to me, God, like you've never done before. God, I need you. I need you, God. I need you, God. God, I'm asking only you can do this, God, is to help me to shift my focus. Jesus. I have been off track. I've been derailed, God. Oh, God, I've made mistakes, God. But I'm coming back to you today, Lord God. I'm surrendering my 
will to you, God. Oh, God, I'm saying yes to your will, God. I'm saying yes to your way, God. I surrender everything this morning, God, because you are Lord. You are Lord. You are Lord over my circumstance. You are Lord over my situation. As the song says earlier, he is Lord. Hallelujah. He is Lord God Almighty, and he rules and he reigns forever, and no weapon that is formed against you will be able to prosper. I decree and declare that what was able to take you down will not, cannot stop, hallelujah, this shift that's taking place, because it's time for acceleration, it's time for us to focus on what God is going to do in us, through us, and even around us. Yes, Lord. And the Lord said anything and anyone that tries to block it, kill it right now. I don't literally mean I'm not using a gun or a knife, but kill it in the spirit. Kill that enemy. We condemn that right now. We condemn that right now. We condemn that right now. The Bible says deep Call it unto deep. So as you are in your seat, with your hands lifted, with your eyes closed, call on the deep. Come on, get deep, get deep, get deep, get deep, get deep, get deep, get deep. Ask him to do the impossible. Yes. Shift, shift in this place. Shift in this place god shift in this place god i can sense him i can smell him ah the sweet smelling savor of his nostril is in this place he's in this place he's in this place he's in this place oh god he is lord he is lord he is lord you are lord god you alone, our Lord. We thank you this morning. Whether you're watching on the media or whether you're in the house of God, just lift your hands and tell him, you are Lord. Hallelujah. You are Lord. You are Lord, God. You are worthy, God. You're awesome, God. You're mighty, God. You're amazing, God. Yes, you're wonderful, God. You alone, you alone, you alone, our God. You alone, you alone, you alone, our God. You are worthy. Come on, just tell him. Worthy, you are worthy. Come on, somebody's tapping in. Somebody's tapping in. Come on, let's give him 30 more seconds. Tap in, tap in, tap in, tap in. That's it, tap in. Come on, tap in, tap in, tap in. Oh, you're worthy, God. Shift, shift, God. All over this place, God. Shift. Shift minds, shift hearts. Come on, Jesus. Have your way. Have your way in this place. Have your way in this place. Have your way in this place. You're worthy, God. You are Lord. You alone are Lord, God. Yes, God. Yes, Jesus. Can you feel his presence? I got about shine. Oh, yes, such Lord. a sweet, sweet presence. Jesus. The aroma. Oh, Shana Mandesa. Oh. I am a cushion. Thank you, Lord. Anointing. Yes. Fall on us. Fall in this place. Huh? Anointing. Fall in this place. Huh? Fall on us. Huh? Fall on us. Huh? Fall on us huh? Oh. As you're talking to him, the Lord says, Get ready for my response. Oh, Shaba. Yes, shake him to the Bosa. 
anointing fall on me. Come on, fall. Anointing fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Come on, fall in this place, God. Fall in this place. Anointing fall on me. Hallelujah. Woo, I'm trying to move on. Woo. Yes, she goes But he said, somebody is grabbing a hold of me. Somebody has touched the hem of my garment this morning. Hey, Shaba. Woo, shake it. No more those. Oh, yes, Jesus. Anointing fall on me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory Amen. to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ah. Glory to God. Anointing for me. Anointing for me. Something is breaking in the atmosphere. Something is turning in the atmosphere. Anything that's not like God is leaving in this atmosphere. Every ungodly relationship, every ungodly soul ties, every ungodly thing, every carnal mind is leaving in this atmosphere. Hallelujah, God. God is causing a shift in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Glory to God. No longer will we try to justify our situation, but we will bow down to the presence of God. And God says, I'm getting ready to cut off your ways of thinking. I'm getting ready to cut off tradition. I'm getting ready to cut off what he says and she says. And I'm going to pause. You can walk by faith and not by sight. You're going to see me for who I am. You're going to look through my lens, daughter. You're going to look through my lens, son, because I'm going to do a new thing. I'm doing yes, a new thing. Yes, Lord. I'm doing a new thing Thank you, Jesus. in you. Despite of the pandemic, well. says the Lord God, I'm causing a shift to take place. Thank you, Lord. On March 16th, God gave me a message. Stay in the ark. Wow. And this morning, at, I was up at 3 o'clock and God reminded me, about that message. 
And the Lord, the Lord said to me, watch and look. Because they laughed at Noah when he was building the ark. But because of obedience, the ones that stayed in the ark were safe. And God reminded me of my husband, how we've never closed, he never closed the church. We be coming Sunday after Sunday, Tuesday night after Tuesday night. But not one of us, by the grace and mercy of God, never had to worry about coronavirus. Because when you're in the ark, you are safe. When you're in the ark, you are covered. You might have little issues here and there, but you are saved. It might be a little stench here or there. Because when all animals come together, they have to pass something somewhere. So every now and again, you might get a little stench. But he said, because of your obedience, because you stayed in my will, because you stayed in my presence, because you're walking with me, and because you're talking with me, because you're fasting and praying. Because you're trusting and not just trusting, believing. He said, I'm covering you. He said, I got you. So the little things that brings concern to us, he said, that's just instant gratification. You don't need to worry about that. Because it's a bigger picture than the naked eyes can see. Because what we see is temporary. But what he has for us is eternal. And as long as we trust him, his glory will be revealed through us, in us, and around us. And I'm all about you this morning. But I want the glory of God to be revealed in my life. Moses' encounter caused the glory of God to deliver and bring forth a set of people that were rebellious out of bondage after going around for 40 years in the wilderness. Joshua brought the people out because the glory of God was revealed in his life. Ruth made it out of Moab because God's glory was revealed in her life. Ah. Oh. God says, I'm getting ready to show you what eyes have not seen and what ears have not heard, the things that I have in store for you. I'm not talking about tangible stuff. I'm talking about spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Yes, Lord. I'm talking about his anointing that destroys the yoke and breaks battles. I'm talking about walking line upon line and precept upon precept. And so this morning, mm, it's not easy it's not easy to follow God at times when you can't feel him and when you can't even trace him. And a lot of people have given up because they feel like God is not going to come true. But I beg to differ because the God that we serve has never lost a battle. The God that we serve never fails. The God that we serve is omnipotent and omnipresent. The God that we serve is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think. The God that we serve, Mama, the God that we serve can turn the wheel because the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. So why wouldn't we trust a God like this? Why wouldn't we believe a God like this? Because think about it. When you woke up this morning, we didn't wake ourselves up. 
If he didn't blow his do the breath and power back on the inside of us, we wouldn't be here today. So every time you get up, you gotta say, God, I thank you. I made it on this side. Yes, Lord. So many people died, but we're still alive. All right. So many people don't even have use of their men. We have two hands. Jesus. Oh, we got two feet. Jesus. We can talk. We got use of our speech. Yes, we have, we're in our right minds. Yes, God says he wants us to stop worrying about the minor things in life, the things that are not that important, and focus on him. Give him what is due to him. Trust him. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. He said, In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct our path. We serve a God that never lies. We serve a God that is faithful to his word. We serve a God that when we surrender our will to him, he will definitely come see about us. He don't always come when we want him. But I bet you best believe he's always on time. He's always on time. I, I don't know about you, but I can say, God, thank you. Because I've experienced his on time. His on time response. His on time response. So yeah, though you might walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Don't you dare fear. Don't you dare worry. Because even in the valley, he's there with you. If he's there with you on the mountain, he's there with you in the valley. The song says the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. Come on, give God praise right there. He's with us. He's with us. He is with us. Yes, it's the angel. He's with us. <laughs> He's with us. And he'll never leave us or forsake us. I love to see the children giving God praise. Amen. Yeah. The Bible says you got to train up a child the way they should go. But so when they get older, they will not depart from it. God is with us. And he'll never leave us. Neither will he forsake us. My God. I got so much more. It's so much more. It's so much more. Mm. Mm. Woo. See what happened is. We. God has given us authority. And power. To withstand the enemy. But we're allowing the enemy to bounce us all over the place. We're allowing the enemy to beat us at his little stupid games. And he has, he doesn't have what we have. He will never have what we have. He cannot have what we have. We have a gift. We are kingdom carriers. We are walking vessels that is carrying the kingdom of God. He never, he'll never experience that. So why are you allowing him to beat you when you are walking in kingdom authority? Why are you allowing it to get you depressed and downcast? Mm. Okay, so that situation did not work out. Uh -huh. Moving right along. Uh -huh. hey, hey. Uh -huh. Moving right along. Okay, so this person walked out of me. Moving right along. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you're not going to feel hurt because you're human. Yes. But you got to move right along. Amen. You got to move right along, meaning trust God. You got to believe God. Okay, so my finances is messed up right now, but I'm still moving right along. I'm still going to have the loudest praise. I'm still going to trust God. I'm not going to diminish my, my character or my attitude or my personality just because something gets funny. No, I'm going to still trust God. Because when you trust him, he will come see about you. Oh, this is the ebony. I hear the Lord saying, because you persisted. You could have said, Dr. Burchett, I'm not going to make it. But even after I saw the text late in time, she came all the way from Harrisburg just to be in the house of God. Thank you, Jesus. And God said, because you persisted. He said, you're hungry for something. Amen. And he said, he's filling you. He is shut up inside. He said, even as your hands were lifted to him, you were feeling the presence of God. Uh -huh. And he said, because of your persistence, 
I don't know if this story, but there, you know the story, but there was a woman in the Bible with an issue of blood. And she was an outcast to the people. They counted her out. And after 12 years of bleeding, she had a sickness where she was bleeding. And after 12 years, the Lord told me, the Lord told me to share this story with you. So after 12 years of bleeding, one day she, she, she must have had money because she was spending all her money trying to get healing. And the doctors, nobody could heal her. There was nothing her money could buy that could heal her. But one day, she heard that Jesus was passing by. And she pressed her way through the crowd. And it was out of order for her to even go in the presence of God because she was an outcast. But she decided in her mind that if I can touch the hem of his garment, that I can be made whole. And sometimes it's not a big touch. It's just a little touch. Wow. And you can touch him this morning with your praise. Yes. You can touch him this morning with your prayer. And God said, because you pressed, that was you making your way through the crowd. My God, my God. So he said, now that you've made it through the crowd and you're in his presence, uh -huh. your next move is critical. Uh. <laughs> Your next decision, your next thought, your next focus is critical. I met her she, when I was working at the daycare. She was one of the mothers there. And she reached out to me yesterday. And she was sending me a text, but I didn't know who it was, you know? I didn't write, I'm, I'm, I have a new phone that wasn't safe. And she reached out to me yesterday and she talked about church, you know, which want me to publish her book. And she's talking about church and stuff. And I told her what time, I didn't tell her what time we start, that I forgot to send her the message of the address. And I got a message last night. And this is just God, the Holy Spirit. And the message said, what's the, the church address? And this was late last night. So I sent the message late. Then this morning, I missed it again. Missed it in the text. Didn't get to respond until I got in the church. And I said, we start at 10. But you can still press your way if you want to. And she said, I'm leaving the gym and I'm coming. I'm going to get, get, get dressed and come. So I want to just give God thanks for what he's going to do. Thank you. Thank you. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Father, we thank you, God. Father, we bless you, God. Father, we honor you, God. We honor you for your best, Lord, right now, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're going to do in her life. Father, bless her, bless her children, Father. Bless her relationship, Father. Bless everything that concerns her, God. Father, God, you're going to bring her here by accident, Lord God. You make no mistakes in the things that you do. So, God, even right now, I ask you to bless my sister, Ebony. Even right now, Father God, I thank you for the opportunity to be able to minister to her spirit. Father, I pray now, God, that something is said or she can feel your presence, God. I pray, Father, that you minister to her to the depths of her soul right now. In the name of Jesus, I let the fire of God oh, consume her now. God, everything that she need, supply, 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 Lord God. Father, let her gifts make room for her, Lord God, and bring her among great men. Father, I thank you now, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For eyes have not seen, ears have not heard the things that you have in store for your daughter. Ebony, can I ask you a question? Are you saved? Have you, have you accepted Christ as your personal Savior? I hear the Lord says, it's a season of recommitment to you. The Lord says he's shifting some things in you. He has really been shifting some things in you. He's been talking to you. He's been he's trying to reel you back. You might have thought that you were calling me for a book, but that wasn't what it's about. It's all about him. But God said he wants you to recommit your life back to him. You want to do that today? Father God, we thank you, Lord God. Come on, give God praise. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want you just to say after me, dear God. 
I thank you today. I thank you for saving me. I thank you for forgiving me. I thank you, God, that you're covering me under your blood. Lord God, be my Lord and personal Savior. Bring me back into the fold, God. I surrender my will to you. I surrender my way to you. I turn away, God, from anything that is not like you. And I give you every glory. I give you every praise. Write my name in the Lamb Book of Life. I thank you now, God. I denounce Satan and I take up the cross and I follow you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 For this daughter, your daughters are God. We have some protection, God. We seal it, God, that the enemy will not come back in and we try to come back with retaliation against her, God. We blow, we blood block every plan of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. And we stand in agreement as a church, Father God, and we come against every principality and every power and everything from the dark places that will come against your daughter. Baptize her now with your blood. Let the blood permeate her, Father. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's just give God praise right here. Let's just praise God for a moment. Come on, let's just praise God for a moment. Let's just give God a praise for a moment. Come on, let's just tell you, thank you. Thank you for remembering me, God. Thank you for remembering me, God. Thank you, God, that you remember me this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God, I thank you. God, I bless you. God, we honor you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, for the soul that came back to you today, God. Father, we thank you. Oh, we ask you to bless us, God, individually and corporately. And we thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory and all the praise, God. Oh, God, we thank you today, God. 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 Oh, we thank you today, God. is open. If you're in this room and you just want to touch or prayer, you have a need, I invite you to come to the altar this morning. We thank you. 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 We bless you. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. If you have a need this morning, and you just desire prayer, <laughs> we ask you to come. My granddaughter have a need this morning, and she desires prayer. Father, we thank you for baby Zoe right now, God. God, I ask you to bless her, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. God, I ask you to cover her under your blood. I thank you for what you're doing in her, God. I thank you for who she is in you, God. God, before you even created her, God, you knew her, Father God. And so, God, I thank you right now for her humbleness and spirit and her reverence to you. I thank you that she has a relationship with you 
even at a young age, God. Ah, uh, God, that you remember her, Father God. And she's covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, Father, let uh, the anointing fall on her life, Lord God. I thank you, God, that she's covered from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. And no other religion, nothing else, will come nigh her, Father, in the name of Jesus. This is your daughter, Father, to the sheep of your pasture. And God, I thank you that you're going to use her, even at a young age, to minister your word to the people of God. Bless her, Father, in every area of her life. I love you, God, and I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. your blood, Lord God, because you're Lord of her life. I thank you, God, that you're going to use her mightily for your glory and your glory only. No other God will get any glory from her life. We speak it now. We prophesy over her. We declare it. We proclaim it. And we decree it. Yes, and it is so. It is so. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for my daughter, your daughter, God. Lord God, I pray right now, God, in the name of Jesus. You know the desires of her heart. Mm. 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 Peace be still. Peace be still. Mm. The Lord says, only a distraction, Venetia. Oh, Sharabako Satanabasi. Rabababati, Ubu, Rabababasa. I speak to the depth of your spirit right now. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. I speak to that little girl in you. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, God. The Lord said that he, your desire is his desire. Your desire is his desire. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. And so, Father, we thank you right now, God, for what you are getting ready to do in her, through her, and around her. God, I speak to her spirit. Rise up, the fighter in you. Rise up, Shaba. Rise up, Shaba. Rise up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord said, clothe yourself, daughter. Rise up, daughter. For such a time as this, you shall not miss the destiny. Inshallah. Our God that has already been destined for your life. It's only a distraction. 
says the Lord, Father God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so, God, we thank you right now, God. Ah, oh, God, what you're ready to do in her, God. I speak. I speak to her spirit. I speak to her spirit. God says he's speaking to your spirit. He's speaking to your spirit. He's speaking to your spirit. Rise up, O Shabbat. Rise up, O Shandarabasia. Rise up in her God. Stand tall in her God. Stand tall in her God. Do a quick work. Accelerate a shift. A Shanda, O Rabasia. In her now, Father. The Lord said, You will never lack for no good thing as long as you continue to trust in him. You will never lack for nothing as long as you continue to trust in him. Delay does not mean denial. It might look like it's never going to happen, but God says it is already done. Asharabasiya O Ramandi Kusata so I prophesy to the dry bones. <laughs> I prophesy to the dry area in your life. And I speak life. Yes, Shabbat. Head bone, neck bone, ankle bone, back bone. Line up and cover her, Father, for what she's getting ready to do. Cover her under your blood. Mm -hmm. Cover her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Let the blood do the work in her, Father. We thank you now, God. We bless you now, God. And God, even as I'm touching her, I come in agreement for Zene, God. I come in agreement for her salvation, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I come in agreement for all our children, Father. As she's standing here at this altar, I come in agreement with your word that you shall never leave us nor forsake them, Father God, and your hand is upon them. So we call them out to you today. Right now, Father, protect, provide, and bring your promise, God, to their life. I thank you now, God. I bless you now, Lord. Ah, oh, God, we bless you, God. We bless you, Lord 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 God. We bless you. We bless you, God. And we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We just want to thank God for his word. Today. And I pray that you were blessed today. And just remember the topic. God is getting ready to shift your focus. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Glory to God. Come on, give me just a hand clap. Hallelujah. Come on, give me just a hallelujah. Has anybody been blessed this morning? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's just put a praise on the word. Amen. 
And I praise God, amen, for an awesome word, hallelujah, amen, from his vessel, amen, glory to God, amen, for a beautiful wife, amen, and yes, we Lord. pray for her even now, we pray, hallelujah, yes, that there will be hallelujah. no repercussions in the spirit realm, there will be no retaliation in yes, the spirit God. realm, hallelujah. hallelujah, for her sharing the truth yes, God. of God's word, hallelujah, yes, on this morning, hallelujah, everything God of the word intended for God, Lord, to release, God, Lord, to do. We pray, God, Lord, that it will accomplish it yes, even now God. in Jesus' name. Jesus we cover her with the blood of Jesus. Yes, Hallelujah. The word bearer and every yes. word that has gone forth, we cover the word. Hallelujah. We believe that it is on fertile ground. Yes, Hallelujah. And it shall grow and manifest yes, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I praise God. Amen. I praise God. Amen. Because God is good. Hallelujah. Thank God for everybody, amen. That's here, even though that had to leave early, amen. And those that couldn't make it on today. So we've got to praise God, amen, for our, a couple from Harrisburg. Have to give them a hand. Amen. Praise God, amen. And I've just seen, amen, as my wife is praying for you, amen. I see the man of God is a worshiper. Amen. Amen. I see your worship. I don't need to ask Hallelujah. you if you have a relationship. I know that you do. Yes, Amen. Stop. Glory to God. Amen. And that's a blessing. Amen. It's always wonderful. Amen. To see yes. young yes. Christian couples. Amen. Godly couples. Y'all yes. know what I'm saying. Yes. Amen. I know Amen. a lot of people are here But a lot of people think that Christian couples is not cool. Right. Amen. But don't they look good together? Amen. They look good. Amen. Praise God. That's what it's about. That's yes. what it's about. Amen. And they think Amen. 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 strong people. Yes. Amen. To represent Christ. And still be thorough. Still be cool. All of that. And then you can do that. And that's why I applaud you both. And then it's nice to meet you both. And then glory to God. And then God is so good. Hallelujah. God is so good. God is so good. Hallelujah. And then the Holy Spirit is here. A lot going through my spirit right now. Glory to God. Amen. But the time is far spent. Hallelujah. We're going to hallelujah release you today. Uh, is that okay? Is there anything for the good of the cause? Anything for the good of the cause? Anything else? No? Glory to God. Who's going who's gonna to program for the good of the cause? I am? <laughs> okay. Praise God. Oh. Harvest House Restoration Center. Senior Pastor Reverend Dr. Larry Burchett Jr. Co-Pastor Reverend Dr. Joanna Burchett. A prolific couple on fire for God in the Carlisle, Pennsylvania area. 405 North East Street, Carlisle, Pennsylvania, 17013. Come on out. Enjoying this wonderful church Sunday mornings 10 a.m. Tuesday evenings 7 p.m. You will not be disappointed. <laughs>